with John Woolit and Swagon Air Academy. And I had the chance to have a master's thesis student, Francesco, from Italy. And together we did one of our first detailed case study project. It's uh, an Anderson building in, located in Falkenberg. And uh, Dennis Johansson, uh, nowadays working at the Lund University, actually installed some monitoring system in that building. And we have been fortunate to get enough data to do some evaluation of this building, which has our products, let's say, or components in it. Not, I don't think it's a system solution. No, because there is not the, uh, the heat pump is not a blue box. So yeah. It's a um, double effective pump or couplet. Mm, but uh, I don't know a a anything about that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have any information about that. So the presentation will take uh, like 45 minutes or something, so you can ask the questions during the presentation or after the presentation. And I hope you find this presentation useful because it's one of our yeah, hopefully aims to have more buildings with Swagon components analyzed and use them for Use them for sales people or for the technical people or just for the knowledge. Enjoy. And we have something sweet here, so please help yourself. So, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for being here. Attending to this presentation, that uh, basically it's uh, the conclusion of my master thesis that I developed here in my in uh, Thanks to the exchanging program Erasmus Placement, uh, I've been placed here for six months and uh, I work with uh, Petra Vladikova, with uh, Marcus Gallo, and uh, Dennis Johansson. So this, is, uh, this work can be represented. Yes, it is a, a cooperation between uh, Padua University, Webon, and uh, University. If uh, you have any question, please stop and ask. I don't know your background, um, so maybe I can say something that uh, it could be considered as, uh, I don't know, uh, not interesting, but uh, I hope you are enjoying it. So, thanks to the continuous monitoring in the temperature and uh, relative humidity of a facility, we had the opportunity to evaluate the comfort inside it. At, uh, and uh, not only the comfort, but also the energy that uh, is used to, uh, to reach this, uh, this comfort situation inside this facility. Then, the installed system is a constant volume system, and uh, so our question is, uh, which is the, uh, the, the energy saving that we can achieve using a most updated system, uh, or better, a variable air volume or a demand control ventilation system instead of a constant air volume? And so we did it with the IDA eyes, uh, with a, a detailed model of, the, of, this, uh, of this building, in order to evaluate uh, the energy and uh, the economic uh, advantages that uh, uh, this uh, new solution can uh, lead to the system. So, the objective are, of course, evaluate uh, the comfort inside the building because it's uh, basically it's the main point of uh, every HVAC system. And then, of course, to compare the cost center volume, the real cost center volume system, to the model one in order to to see if uh, um, the, 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 the system can be, co the, the system, the, the model and the simulation can be considered, considered as viable in order to, um, in order to simulate uh, different systems inside building. And then, of course, uh, evaluate and model the variable air volume and the demand control ventilation and uh, evaluate the benefits for this, uh, for this building. This building is placed here in Falkenberg, in the southwest coast of Sweden, and uh, it is a 2009 building. building. Uh, it is made by concrete and steel, 
with a good insulation, a good outdoor insulation in order to avoid the thermal losses uh, through the building envelope. And uh, it is, it, it, uh, is um, a multifunctional building because here we can see the warehouse here and this is an office and office. This is the monitor, monitored one and this is a rented one. This is a retail and uh, this is a packing zone. So the HVAC system is composed by here a uh, ground cut and double effect heat pump of 55 kilowatt uh, with a COP, a nominal COP of 4.85 and a EDR of 3.85 that we have considered as constant along the all analysis because we don't have any information about that and also because our focus was on the ventilation system and not, not on the production system. And then with additional heater we have um, a standard heater, a standard electric heater of 42 kilowatts. The ventilation is uh, supplied by free air only unit that, uh, um, that supply air to three different subsystems. And uh, so every unit uh, is equipped uh, with uh, the rotary, rotary, rotary ex exchanger and bypass section in order to avoid to save energy during the unoccupancy. Uh, then the air is handled, of course, and then go, goes through the, um, to the different zones that are different served. Uh, there are different kinds of ventilation systems in the different zones. Then the air is extracted and goes through the air in the unit that can be exhausted or can be bypassed. If uh, it's bypassed, we expect a reduction of the consumption in the fans absor absorption because uh, the bypass uh, of the pressure drop that uh, are introduced with the uh, with the ex heat exchanger, and also a reduction in the in the energy for heating and for cooling because of course the air is already preheated or precooled because it's uh, already handled by the air in the unit. In addition, we can uh, have in a design point we can have a. Uh, um, increase or decrease of the temperature of 2 degrees in order to uh, achieve a higher saving in, uh, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this system. But uh, the, the last system, um, the, the, the final system, is not uh, uh, as, the designed, uh, as, as was, was designed because activity changed inside the, the, the building and uh, so adapt the so the system was adapted to it with the installation to of eating fan coils and cooling fan coils in different zones of the of this uh, of this building and uh, because of that this is the system the only energy that can is used inside this uh, this building is the electric source here we just focus uh, on <coughs> this area unit that's, uh, that uh, serves three zones here, the office, uh, retail and packing. Here we can see the area unit with the by bypass. And uh, this is the only monitored area um, unit and uh, we collect three years of data of this, uh, of this, uh, of this system. And uh, the three zones, uh, the office, retail and packing, we can see that the office is an air water system with uh, active beams here uh, inside the office uh, that allows a good personalization of the comfort and uh, uh, ceiling diffusers and ceiling diffusers in order to um, to climate to climate the different uh, um, corridors and uh, such. Differently, the retail is a total air system, uh, but uh, here during the time uh, were installed uh, um, some fan coils in order to, um, to, to, to help uh, in, uh, during the summer time and uh, probably also during the, 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 the winter time. And uh, the packing is a uh, mixed system, air and air water, with of course one uh, active beam and uh, air diffuser for, for large spaces. And also here, this is the zone that had the most changing during the time because of the installation of heating and cooling fan coils and the increase of the airflow of 300 liters per second. Yes. 
this is. So the monitoring system uh, is done um, by two different uh, systems that are completely um, unlinked to each other. The handling unit, unit uh, system that, of course, is equipped in, inside, is um, integrated inside the monitoring, inside the handling unit, and uh, it collects information of all these uh, uh, parameters and uh, are stored inside a SD card. Differently, the, uh, for the evaluation of the indoor comfort, uh, Dennis Johansson installed some probes in uh, several spots of the building in order to evaluate the different, uh, the different condition of, uh, of, the different, uh, of the different zones and collect information, temperature and relative humidity and, are collect and can be re reached via web. These two systems are well captured and we can use uh, and can be used together in order to have a wide um, information on the airflow and on the temperature inside this building. Looking to the airflow, we can see in the three years of monitoring that uh, the system is a constant air volume system with uh, some gaps here is, uh, are the, the, the white gaps the, are the missing data. And uh, we can see that there is a constant air volume with an increase of the airflow of 300 liters per second in April 2012. And uh, the consequence of this, um, of this increase is that uh, the building after that is uh, unbalanced in the pressures because the extract airflow is higher than the supply one. And that leads to uh, leakages through the building envelope. But uh, leakages are not uh, uh, focused. We, we didn't focus our attention on leakages or of leakages inside this uh, inside this um, research. But uh, of course, it's one of the most uh, important uh, um, parameters that affect the efficiency in a, in a, a co for, for for the comfort and for the system. And uh, during the night, during the unoccupied mode, uh, we expected, because of the bypass, a reduction in the energy used in the fans. But here we can see that there is not a reduction that uh, can be considered uh, interesting. Probably because a uh, mm, uh, wrong regulation in the, in, the, in, the, in the bypass and the night mode. Basically, what we want to do from uh, these three years of data. This is the indoor, um, one, the, the most disadvantaged uh, problem for the indoor um, monitors. And uh, what we want to do is uh, to build a fake year uh, that is called reference year on record in order to have a uh, the 100% of uh, indoor temperature uh, measures, records. And, uh, and when, because the, the system is a constant air volume system, when the uh, airflow is, are missing, the airflow data are missing, we can uh, uh, use to fill the gap, this, uh, those gaps uh, the, 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 design, uh, the design value for the, for the airflow. So we used as baseline the 2011, and uh, we filled this gap with the January and February of 2012 because uh, our, all this, uh, um, this, uh, this point, these records, are current in, uh, with the, the airflow of 1800. So we have now our reference here on the records in order to evaluate uh, the, the energy inside, the, this, uh, inside this building. And uh, is uh, mm, characterized by the 100% of the temperature inside, this, uh, inside the facility and uh, all current with, uh, the, um, with the airflow with the airflow of 1800 uh, liter per second. And of course, the weather data are downloaded from uh, the Swedish Meteor Meteorological Institute. So, we said that we want to evaluate the comfort and the energy inside this uh, inside the building. Why the comfort? Because of course it's uh, the main purpose 
of uh, an uh, HVAC system and uh, because uh, the building management uh, had uh, received complaints uh, coming from people inside the packing room for pool discomfort and uh, we want to see if uh, these complaints are validated, are justified or not. So we evaluated that one. Then we did uh, um, an evaluation, a study on the long period comfort and that is a new uh, research uh, made from uh, Michele De Carli from Italia, from Padua University, that uh, in order to evaluate uh, the numbers, the number of hours inside the year when people are inside the comfort boundaries uh, that uh, are suggested by the uh, by the, the European standard, and then of course uh, we evaluate the energy category of the building. So let's start with the with the complaints inside the packing zone. Because of the complaints come from cooling discomfort, so we evaluated the weekly outdoor minimum temperature in uh, the all period of uh, of, uh, of monitors and. Uh, we did it uh, in the office zone, in the retail zone, and also in the packing zone. We can see in the office zone here that uh, here, of course, the blue line is the outdoor temperature and the red line is the temperature that is recorded inside this, uh, inside this zone. And uh, we can see here that um, in the indoor temperature, temperature fluctuates uh, um, with the higher peak in, uh, during the day and the lower peak during the night, uh, according with the uh, with the design, with the description of the night mode or an occupancy mode. But uh, this uh, the the design for the night mode uh, had also the two degrees of of temperature gap. And we can see here that these two degrees are not, uh, uh, are not respected. And uh, now, if we insert the, this bound that uh, represents the minimum recommended temperature um, from the European standard for the heating uh, inside, uh, inside a zone, we can see that uh, that means that uh, the indoor temperature should be higher to this, uh, to this or at least uh, in the in the higher boundary of uh, of this bound, in order to have a comfort uh, a comfort zone, and uh, we can see that uh, the temperature inside this uh, inside this zone is quite inside this uh, this bound. Differently for the retail zone, we can do the same evaluation, but uh, the two degree gap between uh, um, day and night is much more respected, and uh, we can see also that. Uh, the temperature inside this zone is higher than the minimum suggested from the from the from the standard, as well as for for the packing, uh, as well as for the packing that uh, we can see that it's uh, uh, mostly overheat the packing. So looking to please, yes, uh, what was the complaint about? Was it uh, too high temperature? Not or for low? cool discomfort. Okay. During winter time, winter time. So we analyzed the the outdoor minimum temperature in a, for, with a, a lo, long load of, of a week because the, mm, if we analyzed the minimum temperature just for a day the load is not enough to make, uh, to make, it, to make it visible inside the building mm. so we used um, an higher load in order to allow the building to adapt to the temperature so, uh, looking to these three profiles, we can uh, expect, without knowing anything about the, the complaints that we receive, we expect complaints not here in the packing, but in the office temper, in the office zone. So, because it's mostly inside the, the bound that is just suggested by the European standard. And because of that, complaints are rejected. Of course, in packing zone, we just have one point of uh, measures. Uh, the maybe, maybe mm, the complaints could could be 
contains were in a, another zone, in, a, in another, another part of this, uh, of this zone. But of course, we cannot see, uh, we cannot know. So complaints are rejected. We need the same uh, evaluation for the maximum, for, for the weekly maximum temperature, and uh, we don't uh, have anything to highlight except for the higher, the, the high distance here from the temperature recorded here in the office and uh, the minimum uh, bound, uh, the, the minimum boundary of the boundary recommended by the European standards. Then uh, we analyzed the long period comfort. As I said before, the number of hours where people are out of the, or are inside the, 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 the comfort uh, boundary suggested by the European standard. And uh, we evaluated, evaluated it uh, with the weighted time, so it's the contrary. The number of hours uh, where people are out of this boundary that uh, are evaluated with uh, the percentage of people dissatisfied and the predicted mean vote uh, based, of course, on the adapting clothing and the activity. These two parameters are two parameters that the European standard uh, um, use to evaluate the comfort inside the, inside the building. And uh, we can see here that uh, for the office zone, we have a cool discomfort, uh, mostly during the overall year, with uh, 2007 hours of cool discomfort, and uh, differently in packing and the retail zone, we just have a warm discomfort during the um, during summertime. Now, but which is the limit of uh, the of, of the hours inside this uh, inside that year? It's not well defined because uh, it's a, of course it's a new there's a new research. But some some authors uh, say that it could be around 100 and 150 hours per year, and uh, here we are quite high, but. Of course, there is nothing inside the inside the, the, the European standard about uh, about the, this research. But what is interesting in uh, this uh, evaluation is that the differences between office packing and retail are that, of course, the activity inside this uh, inside the zone. But in uh, packing and retail are mostly centralized zone and uh, office. Uh, because of the installation of active beams, um, as a um, better um, control on the indoor climate. And because of that, it uh, seems that uh, a cooler temperature is, uh, uh, is, uh, is wanted inside, uh, inside the, the, the building. And uh, that could be, um, this, uh, this analysis could be in accordance with the theories of the adaptive comfort. So it's uh, something that could be, um, could be more investigated at uh, that point. Then, because of the knowledge of the temperature inside the different zone, we evaluate the category of the overall building. And we see that in the winter time, the office falls in the category one, and the retail and packing in the second one. But why are falling in the second category? Because uh, the system cannot reach the, the, the optimum set point, or because it's um, overheating during winter time. And this is the why, because we can see here that the percentage of the, of, of the data are mostly on uh, this uh, interval here that uh, show that these zones are mostly overheated, as we saw before inside the looking the profile of the of the different temperature and uh, the same in summer where we can see that the office is out of the boundary of the um, of the um, category suggested from by the standards by the european standards because uh, um, a strong overcool of the of the zone and uh, we can see here that uh, there is a a good potential, a wide margin to improve the, 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 the comfort uh, inside this, uh, the, this zone, just uh, mm, choosing the, the right set points in this, uh, in, in this building. 
So, what we have seen since now, we have seen that complaints are not justified because uh, the packing zone is overheated instead, uh, uh, instead of the rest of the building. And also the rest of the building is mostly overheated or overcooled because we can see, we have seen that um, the, the, the last analysis on the energy on the, on the category. And uh, the investigation of the long period of comfort show that uh, um, a colder temperature is, it could be required inside this, uh, inside this building. And uh, maybe mm, more investigation can be done in, uh, in, in this field. And uh, in addition, that uh, there's a wrong regulation in the night mode in, uh, both, of the, um, in both of the aspect of the temperature and uh, of, of the um, airflow. And everything that leads to the importance of the continuous monitoring. Because uh, with a good monitoring, good and continuous monitoring, the, all this problem that we highlighted inside this, uh, inside this, uh, this work can be easily and, uh, and speedily, <laughs> I don't know how to say, um, but uh, can be, it is easy to highlight all this, uh, all, all this point in order to achieve a better comfort and a lower energy inside this building. Then, because of the knowledge of some temperature across some coils in, uh, inside this, uh, this building, and uh, because of the detailed knowledge of the equipment inside, in, inside the facility, we had the opportunity to evaluate uh, the energy for the thermal purpose in, uh, uh, in terms of electric kilowatt hour per uh, on square meter. Mm, because if you remember, the only energy that is entering the building is the, uh, the electric one. So in this way, we can uh, uh, compare the energy for thermal with the, the energy for the ventilation. And uh, we can see here how much is important the energy for ventilation compared to the thermal one, mm, mainly in, uh, mm, during the period where the outdoor temperature is not so cold or not so warm. So May, June, and September, October. And uh, in the zone where is a uh, total air system uh, compared to the air water system. Here we have also the annual, uh, uh, mm, the annual specific energy for, for, the, for this zone. And you can see that here for the office we have 41 electric kilowatt hours on a square meter per year and uh, 43 in retail and just seven for the factory. And uh, this, uh, mm, it, it seems to be, to have something that is not okay um, in uh, this analysis because it's uh, too low compared to the other two. And then we have, of course, an uh, overview of the, mm, of the overall consumption of, of that building. This is, calculated and uh, these are to evaluate Then, we have seen that uh, the model is the constant air volume model, a constant air volume system, sorry. And uh, we have to, we want to improve this system in order to see the saving in uh, both uh, energy and uh, economic uh, uh, quantity that can be achieved can be achievable with a VAV or DCV system, uh, keeping the same indoor comfort. And then we evaluated this model, the DCV plus one, in order to improve the, the comfort inside this uh, in, inside this facility, in order to set the right temperature set point, uh, in order to lead all the um, all the system in the first category class. And uh, we did it with Ida Eyes, and that is a dynamic simulation software. We build up the overall building, and uh, we just focused on uh, the zones that we uh, that we studied that were monitored. Uh, of course, uh, using the, the, the right layers uh, for walls, for um, ceiling, and for openings, but also um, building <coughs> this, mm, the the air and the unit as. Uh, 
the, the, the most close possible as the, as the real one. And of course, the set points for the, um, for the temperature, uh, for the outdoor temperature, were downloaded uh, from the Swedish Meteorological, Meteorological Institute. And the temperature came up from the, uh, from the previous analysis, as well as the airflow, that are the designed airflow for each zone. We can see here that the model answered in a good way uh, with the calculation we did. In off-field zone with an error of 0.6%, with a re in a retail with 1.1%, and in packing with a huge error of 40%. And uh, this is, uh, we expect that because of, uh, because of the evaluation of the energy inside the, inside the building that we see, we saw that uh, the evaluation of the energy inside the building is inside the packing zone was too low compared to the to the office and to the retail zone. But because of the office is the zone without changing at all during the time, and here we record the the, the lower um, the, the lower error, we can assume the model as validate. But uh, there was something that wrong that was wrong inside the packing. So we focused the att well, our attention there. And just now we saw that the activity changed during the time inside this, uh, inside this zone. Uh, in the first time it was designed as, uh, as a stock area that uh, the, the packing zone without control on the temperature and uh, on the airflow in order to uh, yeah, without temp <laughs> control on temperature and airflow. And then, just in a second time, uh, it was uh, adapted to, to, to people uh, that uh, had to, to work inside this, uh, inside this zone. Of course, uh, with uh, uh, the in post installation of fan coils and uh, increasing the airflow of 300 liters per second. And uh, we did uh, the same adjustment in, this, uh, in, in our model. And of course, uh, we change the weather data using uh, now the data, the, the, the right data for the energy calculation. And uh, we see here that uh, the, in the packing zone, we have an increase of the energy of 400%. Here. But uh, now, the free energies here in the office retail packing are much more um, balanced. So this is the model, the baseline model that we used uh, to, um, that we improved in order to evaluate the, 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 the energy and the economical saving achie uh, achievable with the variable volume and demand control regulation. So, the variable volume we use the same indoor temperature uh, set points for for the for the daytime, and uh, for the nighttime, we just uh, because of the, the activation of the bypass uh, uh, model, we just uh, use the, this uh, amount of uh, fresh of fresh air. So we just uh, keep kept the identical airflow <coughs> that uh, is the minimum allows for, allowed from the uh, Swedish legislation. And uh, we also did uh, set the, the, the increase, the rise or the, the decrease of the temperature of two degree. For the demand control ventilation, we used the same temperature set point as for the variable air volume system. But uh, we adapt the, uh, the airflow to this occupancy profile of, uh, of people inside the building. That uh, is not the, the real one. I mean, it's the real one for the office zone, but uh, it could be really different uh, from the packing of the retail zone. But uh, because of technical, <laughs> technical issues, we use the same, uh, the, 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 the same profile. And uh, with an occupancy rate of the 50%, but uh, we saw that uh, from internal meetings with Marcus Carl that uh, 
the, this uh, occupancy rate is a, a wide conservative value because in the office zone, we can, in a, a standard office, we have an occupancy rate between 28 and 30 percent, but in retail, it doesn't reach the 25 percent, the occupancy rate. So this 50 percent is a wide conservative value. And then we use the demand control ventilation plus one in order to increase, improve the, the, the comfort inside the system. And uh, it was, of course, the same model of the demand control ventilation. What show the results? The results show that uh, we have 54% uh, of the overall saving from the CID to the DCD, and of 42 from uh, DID to DCD, from 42%. And uh, the highest contribute to this uh, decrease of energy is given by the, the energy for the ventilation here that decrease of uh, the 50% between uh, from VAB to DCV and the huge and impressive de um, uh, decrease of energy from over 70% from CLD to DCV and uh, this uh, energy of course have the must be linked to, uh, to an economical evaluation. And the economical evaluation that uh, must be considered the investment cost and the operating cost. The investment cost, we can see here that uh, the RNA unit can be downsized at least or one size, as well as ducts, main ducts and risers, because there's a, a less air that uh, flow inside the ducts and inside the building. And so we can downsize and decrease the cost uh, for those two, uh, those two equipment. But um, to move all this air from one zone to another zone, we really need uh, a high technology system uh, such as uh, the, um, the, 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 the main brand, it, it could be the WISE system or uh, oh, the SuperWISE, I'm sorry, or also uh, the different diffusers and uh, of course uh, um, dampers, the main, in the central zone dampers and the, of course the diffusers dampers. And uh, this, go, this, this installation uh, increased their cost of course, but we can see that uh, we have an additional investment, just of 12% of the CAV from CAV to DCV and 8% from DAV to DCV. And uh, then the operating cost that, uh, of course, is uh, strictly linked with the production of the, of the energy. And uh, we can see here that if that one is the distributed energy inside the, inside the building, uh, how can change the purchased energy here uh, if we use an effective system uh, instead of a non-effective system? Here we can see the, the, install, the, the real installed system, such as the uh, ground cover double effect heat pump, and this is the energy that uh, we have to purchase from the, uh, from the provider. And this is the most common scenario in Sweden, uh, so the district heating and chiller. And uh, we can see the difference of the, of the purchased energy. Economic results show here, we can see the heat pump uh, here, the, the, the light one, the light colors, the district in chiller, we can see that even if uh, the percentage, the most uh, uh, decrease in percentage is uh, achieved with the best effective scenario, with the best effective system, because of the quantity of money is higher in the worst production scenario, for, to a customer um, view, the payback time in the with a worst with a bad uh, effective production system is uh, better than uh, the one group with the, the high effective system because of we have a payback time that uh, is uh, of eight months in the best case and seventeen months in uh, the worst case of system improvement. But of course, in every, in 
in each uh, analyzed uh, improvement, uh, we can see that we have a payback time that is uh, shorter than two years. So, what we have seen here in the economy, in the, the energy comparison and in the models, that we have uh, compared these four models, these three keeping the same uh, comfort condition and uh, the last one uh, increasing. And uh, we have coupled in this way, uh, achieving a 50% of energy saving here with a 70% of uh, energy saving in the, for, the, for the ventilation and uh, a 40% with 50% for the ventilation in the VAV ECD. And in both cases, we can achieve an additional um, decrease of, of, of the energy used of the 12% uh, improving the, 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 the comfort inside this building. Then we have seen the high importance that the production system has on the purchased energy, and uh, we evaluate the payback period that is uh, uh, really short, it's uh, less than two years. And all that, uh, assuming of course, uh, occupancy profile and uh, occupancy rate that uh, are wide conservative uh, compared to the, to the reality, and uh, we didn't consider, consider the, um, the, the, the maintenance that could, be, that could uh, really affect this, uh, this, um, this research, these results. So, concluding, about the, the, the indoor comfort, of course, it's, uh, the, the indoor comfort is the main, uh, the, 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 the main uh, task for an uh, HVAC system. So, it's uh, always, uh, it, it, the, the, the right indoor climate is, uh, it has been considered as baseline in, uh, each insta in every installation. And uh, this is not only for the wellness of people and uh, complaints and legislation, but because uh, um, recent studies uh, show that uh, better comfort uh, is uh, strictly linked with an um, um, increase in the efficiency in, in, in work. Um, avoiding uh, sickness uh, and uh, of course uh, giving a, of course a more, a, a more comfort for, for, for people uh, inside their, their, their office and all that is uh, linked strictly linked with the continuous monitoring and uh, we must be uh, sure that the, this, uh, the monitoring system is uh, installed in, is in place and is uh, working that because uh, it can be easily, really easily highlight all the problems that we have found in this, uh, in this research. But not only the, um, it, it not to be only uh, working good, it has to be also easy to improve the, the system because of uh, if we want some, um, how to say, some um, evaluation in the energy used inside the building. We can add probes in the um, production system, but not only in the production system, but also in the junction between production and distribution in order to see where there are an efficiency inside the system. And uh, a project like that is already running. It's called ISEL project here. And, uh, it is an uh, European project uh, that uh, with the aim mm, to mm, collect information of uh, a big quantity of a building, big quantity of system in a different uh, uh, climate zone in order to um, obtain the, the right match between um, production system, distribution system, uh, building and the climate zone. And Zwevon is part of the project, and uh, my personal uh, uh, hope for the future, future is that uh, much more people and much more country um, uh, take part to this project. Then, one other uh, conclusion is the high importance of uh, detailed information. We have seen uh, how the, uh, the changing Inside this, uh, inside the packing zone, affected the energy and the climate, and also the balance in uh, in the airflow. So, it uh, uh, 
basically he did an S uh, inside the, the, the system because uh, uh, the system had to be adapted to, to, to that. But uh, this uh, uh, this changing are not uh, uh, done with uh, uh, with the, with the, with, the, with the long runs. I mean, with the, with a, a good uh, a good perspective for the future and. Uh, also, that is linked with the continuous monitoring uh, of, of, of the system, but uh, not uh, with a, a simple monitoring of the temperature inside the zone, but uh, is strictly linked with also with the, a figure, the figure of the facility manager that uh, has to always to, um, to, to, to analyze and study and, uh, and uh, verify the right match between uh, the system installed in a building and the building itself, because uh, you know that every building is different and every system is different installed in a, in a different building. What uh, show models and simulation that uh, there's a wide margin of improvement uh, in both the, um, the the comfort the, the comfort and uh, the energy. We can see that the best case scenario is the CBDCB with the, the 50 percent of energy reduction. And that this energy is the minimum energy that, uh, uh, that the building needs. And uh, this energy should be produced with the best, uh, uh, with the most, the, the best effective way. But uh, in a customer point of view, it's not always uh, uh, good because we can see, we have seen that the less effective production scenario have uh, the, the, the best payback time case. Concluding for a DCBC system, why we should uh, make this system and sell this system? Because with the additional investment of 10%, we can uh, achieve a both economical and energy saving of the 50% here with a fast payback period, really fast, less than two years. And then, because uh, it goes to increase the, the values of the, of the overall facility, that because, uh, of course, it's um, a nice technological uh, system that is installed, but not just for that, that because uh, uh, it also has a thin control on the internal comfort that uh, we, can, we have seen that it could increase the productivity inside the building. But increase the productivity means that uh, it's an active cash, cash flow for, for, the, for the customer. So if uh, that active cash flow is uh, inserted inside the uh, payback, payback period, the payback period of two years can be further reduced. And then, of course, it can be used for the for the owner in uh, marketing and, uh, and the commercials. And uh, everything that uh, decreasing the energy use uh, with the minimum uh, quantity of energy that uh, to, to, to reach the best indoor comfort. Now, the, the, about the installed system. The installed system is a good system, but uh, it uh, has some problems that uh, could be uh, lead it uh, at, the, at the top class system. For example, the, uh, the, the balance in, in, uh, in airflow that uh, leads uh, leakages to the building envelope and also the indoor temperature uh, in order to increase the facility category as we have seen. And also, last but not least, the night mode pro protocol that uh, we have seen that uh, can uh, uh, leads to a saving that uh, is uh, up to 20% uh, with, with the operating uh, with the operating uh, system. So that's why that's because the, the, the system changing during the time and uh, uh, the, the changing of the of the building are not followed by uh, accurate change of the system. And uh, then. After that uh, easy improvement of the, of the system, we can update the control system with the, uh, with the latest uh, uh, achieved in, in, in the technology of, of the control and uh, with some easy installation inside the, inside the different zones or uh, inside the, the main ducts 
it could be uh, considered, it could be moved in a simple demand control ventilation system have a, having an energy saving of 50% with a payback period that is less than two years. But uh, this less than two years that I have evaluated, I didn't uh, take into account the increase of productivity and uh, I didn't take into account that uh, this uh, building has already the R&D unit and uh, that. So the, uh, this uh, payback time could be further reduced, could be really short. Then, finally, finally, uh, in a nutshell, in commercial building, uh, the a demand control ventilation is always viable, at least as, as we have seen here, because we can achieve an energy and an economical saving of 50% with a low payback period, increasing the comfort inside the inside the, the, the overall facility, and all that used using the minimum energy as possible. And so the demand control ventilation is a system that is fit for people, for their need, and for our environment. Thank you. If you have any question, please, uh, <laughs> please ask. <laughs> in, some, in some of the slides, you've got a DV, DCV plus ET system. Is that the supervised system? Excuse me? In some of the slides, you've got a standard demand control ventilation system. Yes. Then you go to a class set, which is a, 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 an increased saving. A, an increase of the saving, yes. Is that like a, a supervised system? What's the class, test, class one system? The class one, it's, uh, it's this one. <coughs> did this analysis uh, for the category, okay? And uh, we saw here that uh, the system, the overall building, mostly overheat during the winter time, okay? In uh, retail and packing. And overcooled in uh, summertime in the office zone. If, if we uh, leads, if we change the, the, the settings okay in uh, this uh, point uh, here in, in the central zone we can move the this office in the first category class okay and uh, because in order to evaluate the goodness and uh, to uh, can uh, to be able to compare the different uh, the different systems we had uh, here yes Okay, like that. We took the CAV system that is the baseline model, but uh, we cannot uh, change the indoor set point in order to evaluate something to another. The, the, the set point, the indoor set point should be the same. Okay, so the DAV and the DCV are with the same set points on the constant air volume that, uh, that we have considered as baseline, and then uh, we evaluate this uh, DCV plus one in order to improve. Changing this uh, the indoor set point in order to improve the criteria. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that's possible in two points. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't understand. I, I I'm not um, <laughs> so well. I don't so well know the. Um, the, the, the products of <laughs> Sweden. So, and uh, this is this um, this research. This uh, economic energy results are quite vital because uh, uh, after we did this uh, did this work, uh, we came up with uh, a research of. Uh, um, <laughs> we come up. Or in a, or of a research of a Finnish uh, of a Finnish school, where uh, another student had the opportunity to measure the um, the consumption of a building or a school before the uh, the installation of the demand control ventilation and after the installation of the of the demand control ventilation, and uh, we get to the 
to the same results. So with an occupancy of the 50%, a reduction of the 50% of the, of, of the system, of the, of, the, of the energy here, with the, the reduction of the 70% in the ventilation. So it's, uh, it's quite viable as a, 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 a model. When you said uh, the payback was less than two years. Yes. Uh, that was if you bought uh, a new set of uh, and a new set of uh, yeah. system or everything. Yes. Compared uh, the cost of the volume yeah. to the variable or the demand control yeah. flow share. In, uh, in, uh, in this uh, is a, a comparison between uh, two different installations, of course. Yeah. Uh, and new installations. Uh, it would be interesting to see uh, the payback if you just uh, install the yeah. device or supplies yes. on it, the existing system. Yes, but uh, it was uh, quite... Uh, <coughs> um, it wasn't the aim of this, uh, of, of this research. No. I mean, but it would, it would be a possibility to do so with uh, yeah. uh, cases like this. Yes, yes. Also because it's the most common case in this, uh, in, uh, inside the market. But we will contact the owner and give it the chance to buy the upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and maybe measure <laughs> what the rules Measure what afterwards, do. hopefully, if you let us in. What do you want me? Do you have any more questions? Uh, anyway, Francesco Tizis, his presentation uh, in PowerPoint will be available on the internet or you just can email me or look at Swagon Academy, we will also publish it over there, there will be some articles hopefully published. And uh, if you want, maybe the presentation will be, or some of the parts of the presentation will be also in Swedish, so you might find it useful as well. Otherwise, if you have any questions or anything else, just let us know and yeah, thank you for coming and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you.